I don't know how we we're supposed to start this thing, but <laughs> welcome to Trading Cards. Welcome to Trading Cards. Is right. It's yeah. been a long time coming, and I'm stoked that we're finally bringing it to life. For sure. No, it's. Uh, I don't want to call it a resurgence, but you know we took a little hiatus as we were focusing on the brand, and now we've circled back and we've realized what no better form to uh, share stories and share people and to make it kind of a front facing thing for our brand. Completely. I mean, I think all along we've recognized the value of bringing people together around a table to have conversations and really highlight their stories as it relates to this diverse community that represents the Wilbo brand. But more so than that, just the amazing people that we're lucky enough to surround ourselves with in all the different spaces, you know, whether it be athletes or artists, entrepreneurs, people in, you know, the culinary or kind of beverage space. There's this really kind of diverse group of people that make up our friend group as well as our community. So I think it's going to be really fun. Right. And I think, you know, something that's so fun, we learn it in sports, you learn it in a bunch of different walks of life, but cliche to say, but it's, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey and the people you meet along the way. And uh, to be able to document that and be as transparent and you know, welcoming and approachable as possible, that's, that's things we practice and preach here at, at Wilbo. And um, you know, when it comes to what to expect and who's going to be on here, and it's, it's really just an extension of what makes us go and what, what inspires us. And I think that's a very diverse pool of people. You know, mm-hmm. we, we're, I think growing up with you and, and, you know, obviously we went different ways, different colleges, different kind of environments we live in now, but there's a very common trait in both of us that it's not a specific person that inspires us or interests us. I think, you know, another cliche statement that we always say is there's interesting people and then there's interested people. And, um, you know, you know, those people, when you meet them right away, you're like, wow, like I may not align myself myself with your hobbies or your interests, but I feel that passion and I want to know more and I want to talk. And, uh, I think those are the type of guests we expect to have on and um, encourage to not only engage with the brand and the podcast or whatever, but, you know, to uh, come come be a part of Wilbo. Mm-hmm. Completely. Yeah, I think it's going to be really fun. So, and the thing that we've stressed as well is no different than, you know, other touch points of the brand. We don't need another podcast or show per se. So we're really excited to make this fun and playful as much as it can be inspiring and educational and just a great kind of opportunity to bring people together. Mm -hmm. Um, So we really want to think outside of the box in how we shoot this thing and what episodes we introduce um, because I think that'll be a important kind of touch point as we move forward for sure yeah it's uh with everything we do you know we approach it with intention and we give it love and do our best but you know there's going to be an element of like growing with the podcast Mm -hmm. and you know learning different patterns or segments or you know conversation points but keeping it just super open-ended I think that's no different than when you sit around a campfire, um, especially, you know, outdoors and you're enjoying different experiences, but you never know what those conversations are going to lead towards. And um, those oftentimes become the most fun and most memorable conversations and laughs and tears and joys. And um, that's really the spirit we're trying to capture is, you know, just enjoy and just talk and just be and just go for it completely and that's why i think it was appropriate that we shot this first episode at the store in laguna right down the street from where we grew up and um makeshifted it i mean it took us 45 minutes to set up and then we got all ready to go and the mic wasn't working and i was like what's going on but you know i think that's part of it is this thing's organic we're gonna 
do it not only at home, but also on the road, which I think is going to be really fun where we can actually be in the field and in the environments of our community, whether it be at a brewery or in an artist, you know, music studio or space or in the locker room or clubhouse. I think being able to go to those particular environments on the road is going to be a perfect kind of reflection of the conversations and kind of a, an emphasis around time and place, right? Which is yeah. stuff we talk about. No, we love getting scrappy, you know. Heck yeah! It's, uh, it's not about how all the bells and whistles and how fancy you can do it. It's about just being nimble and <laughs> meeting people where they're at. And uh, you yeah, know, I think that you make a a great point. It's no better way to start this than in store. We're down the street from where we grew up, um, which is kind of where I want to steer this next. Is You know, for a lot of people that come in here daily, they know us, they know kind of our background and our time in sport and then our time at school. And, um, you know, but for a lot of people, Wilbo is just a brand and it's just clothing or it's just the storytelling component or whatever facet or just an event or experience. They don't necessarily know us personally. So I think what is, you know, very important is to share our story too and kind of what led us to want to get in the clothing space or the or the the brand space in general and um what led us to Wilbo and um you know I'll let you take over but being the older brother you have to lead okay but, fine uh, yeah I'll, I'll leave you with that yeah I think that's a great place to start and um you know we share in our upbringing obviously being brothers and best friends and so inherently this idea of being in the branded space or even clothing was something that we necessarily or didn't necessarily have a choice on. It was kind of ingrained in our DNA early on. We grew up to entrepreneurial parents um, and watched as they rode the roller coaster of startup life and, you know, clothing and now footwear. Um, but I think it was a really important part of our upbringing to watch the sacrifice and the hard work and the commitment while being flies on the wall and and learning through watching and then really asking our parents different things that could help inform how we would ultimately kind of carry ourselves in this space. But, um, some of the earliest memories for me with you, you know, and our, and our family, are coming home from school when we were homeschooled and doing homework on boxes that were getting ready to go out. And it was a small little brand and no one really knew what it was, but it starts there. It's kind of that nimble approach. So growing up in Laguna um, with entrepreneurial parents, we really watched this kind of path of theirs unfold and it was really, really special. But, um, you know, the the different lessons and the experiences that we even got, whether it be walking the trade show floor at ASR or outdoor retailer or surf expo and just being able to soak that all in, there's a magic to the branded space and being able to capture a lifestyle and celebrate a particular culture by way of product and storytelling and ultimately experiences. That was always such an early kind of experience that informed what we wanted to do. Right. Long yeah. term. And just to give a little context, um, our dad started as a sales rep at Quicksilver in the late eighties. Yep. Late eighties. And then my mom shortly came on for the, the women's side at Roxy and that's where they met. And then they got married. They fell in love, <laughs> they got married, they had Robbie and then they had me. Um, but as Robbie mentioned, um, they later, um, started Olakai, which was a sandal footwear company in early 2000, 2003. It was actually 2006. 2006. Was too Just before to, the too young for economic math. crisis. Way too young for math. Yeah. Um, but like you say, there was just this innate kind of spirit that I don't think we could even put words to at the time um, of entrepreneurship, of getting scrappy, of being your own boss, of you know, dictating and taking that risk. I think, you know, whatever path you choose, whether you go work, you know, um, for a company or you start your own, there's there's pros and cons for both. But I think um, undoubtedly 
starting your own brand is a risk. And I think just growing up surrounded by that and seeing kind of the conviction and confidence of them going for it, I think there was kind of an innate thing that you and I learned um, of doing such, of like believing in yourself, believing in, you know, a, a specific product or niche and, and really going for it. And, um, you know, I think growing up in Laguna, especially surrounded by so much art, so much culture and the ocean, the natural beauty. Um, there was a lot of things that were in a lot of different things that were instilled in us um, that kind of led us to where we are now. And like you said, it felt almost um, inevitable, but you know, I, I wouldn't want it any other way. Completely. And yeah, just to further that, if you think about mom and, and dad, I think we couldn't have two greater heroes in our lives and just sages to help kind of guide us in the right direction while also still providing us with enough enough um, kind of independence to be able to pursue our own path. But, you know, with, with dad, he was still playing baseball. He, I think it was about five or six years in when Bob McKnight gave him a call and they were starting this small little brand called Quicksilver and they were selling trunks out of the, uh, or selling, yeah, trunks out of the trunks of their car. <laughs> and, um, you know, Bob was like, Hey, Danny Mac, we're doing something pretty fun here. It's pretty special. What do you say you come join us? And dad was stoked. He was like, absolutely. I would love to do it. And jumped head first into this kind of new space at the kind of beginning of what turned into one of the most magical periods in the action sports, if not the most magical period in the action sports industry, and just kind of surf and action sport culture altogether. And um, the, one of the biggest things that I've learned from Pops is that you can't put a price on those days. And the feeling of creating something alongside an amazing group of people while also providing immense value to your community and to your consumers. So, you know, the, the funniest part about it in that sacrifice was that as he was doing it and was, you know, on board with the Quicksilver boys, he went to Cal and got a degree at a great school. And people were like, hey, you hear what Danny Mac's doing down in Orange County? He's selling board shorts. Are you kidding me? Like, he should come work for us in insurance or we're selling real estate. We're working in tech in the Central Valley. It's exploding, like this, that, and the other. And D Mac's like, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm doing exactly what I love right. with amazing people. And we're building something special here. So that was an early kind of lesson that he taught us of just follow your heart as cliche as that sounds and if you can be present in the moment to recognize that you're in a time in a place with a group of people building something that resonates with you and your values and the lifestyle you want to live and lead damn that sounds pretty good to me right and if you've ever been a part of something special you know there's there's a whirlwind of feelings there's angst there's you know is this going to work um but like you say, there's also this magical feeling and it's addicting. And it's like, you know, you're, you surround yourself with a group of people that are all on board and they all know what the, the mission is. And, um, you know, you get to do it as a team. And like you said, dad was playing baseball and, um, you know, kind of made that crossover. And I think we kind of experienced a very similar thing, you know, <laughs> growing up, we were, I mean, we weren't always best buddies. You were a big knucklehead <laughs> pranking me. Uh, um, I still am a shithead like yeah, that. Most definitely. Uh, but, you know, there was that sense of in individu wow, individuality that, that you mentioned. Um, but there was also just this natural draw to baseball like dad. And, um, you know, we both grew up playing every sport and just loved being active, whether it was in the water, on the grass, on a court, um, we were just super competitive people. Um, but that led us to play sports in college and you, you playing football and baseball and me just baseball. But I think a really interesting kind of fork in the road for us was when it came time to make it a career, you know, we had spent nearly two decades playing sports every summer going to Arizona, going up north, flying across the country, going to New York. And, you know, it, it was our identity for a while. 
And then, you know, you go off to college and it's a time where you're really on your own and you're figuring out, you know, what makes me, me and what interests me. And I think something that we both kind of experienced was that we didn't like being boxed, you know, um, we didn't like being, oh, that's the athlete um, or, you know, that's such and such. And you, you kind of get put in this box and we both kind of experienced the same thing where we're like, we love our sport, we love our craft, but then outside of that, we have so many different interests, whether it was art or music or, you know, business or you name it. But I think something that was, again, something hard for us to realize is, you know, it's okay to have that identity if, you know, I have my sports life and then I have my kind of creative art life and learning how to make the most of that. And um, I think it's really come to fruition in what we call Wilbo now. Completely. And I think that's such a great segue because I had this conversation with dad the other day, just the idea that for the two decades of our lives, kind of growing up all the way to 22, 23, we were defined by sports. Sports was our life. It was something we loved, but sacrificed a lot and committed ourselves to in order to get to call it this next level of UCLA and, and Cal and wouldn't trade it for the world because of the memories and the friendships that were made along the way. And just the experiences, again, no different than time and a place with a group of people. You can't, you can't really put a price on that. But something that we both struggled with was the suppression around our interests in the arts, storytelling, entertainment, business, because we merely didn't have the time to be able to give it any effort. And so as we kind of got to the latter part of our career, senior year, you know, you unfortunately got smoked by COVID, but we kind of came out of our life as athletes. And for the first time as 23-year-olds or, you know, 24-year-olds, we had wide open grass. We could finally commit ourselves to understanding ourselves and figuring out what we wanted to do, what made us go, and what would ultimately provide us with the most fulfillment. So I think for both of us, since we graduated at different times, you being 2020 and you know me being 2017 is when I graduated from Cal, that was the start of this journey. And no different than what you said about this podcast, it's been an ongoing labor of love where we're interested in a lot of things, especially in the arts. I think if I've put my thumb on it, it all ties back into storytelling in some regard, whether it be us learning how to make clothing here in Southern California to be able to capture these different stories that we're trying to tell, this lifestyle we're trying to push, or photography and video, music, podcast now and, and kind of this talk show I think it's all centered around this love for storytelling and really self-expression through that kind of collection of arts so I think skateboard is driving you know cruising by so you know we're in Laguna um, <laughs> that's been a really fun part of it it's also been difficult at times because right. I think with artistry as well it's one of those things where it's almost like when you're not entirely whole, sometimes that's when you make your best work because you have something to say. Mm -hmm. And I think for both of us, we've not in a, not in a negative way per se, but we've been kind of starving for that. We've been starving for self-expression and really felt that we want to communicate that to the world in different ways in a non-ego kind of centric way. Right. Yeah, I think there's there's kind of that divide. And like you say, I think a lot of athletes and, and people that from a young age are committed to a specific craft can relate with is, you know, that lack of identity. Mm -hmm. And at times, even that lack of adolescence. I think, you know, we were lucky to grow up in such a rich environment. And I mean such by like... Uh, Double entendre. <laughs> Very wealthy community, but thankfully we, you know, the value of hard work and and putting in uh, what you get out is what you put in. And um, but you know, above and beyond that is the ocean, the mountains, um, art community, sport, all that kind of stuff. But like you said, we, you, us in particular, we got to 
out of college, 23 years old. And it, there's almost this sensation of, I'm not ready to be an adult. I feel like, you know, I, I, whether I lost or whether I didn't get to experience those years of adolescence, those years of, um, you know, self-exploration. I think that's where it really came for us. And like you say, it's been an ongoing labor of love. And um, it's just one of those things that as you grow up, your interests change, but you learn more and more about yourself and how to reel that in. And, um, you know, like you said, there was kind of this starvation for expression and with without ego. I think it, it really is just showing our authentic self uh, selves and um, creating kind of this world that's just an extension of what we like to do uh, with the hope that people can relate and people can come come aboard and expand on that you know it's not our idea it's just us presenting something to the world that you know they can take and run with and just creating products experiences stories that just amplify that and and uplift that i think that's the best way to put it because it's is that kind of double play if you will where it is an extension of of our interests and our lifestyle while also recognizing that there are a number of other people out there that share this interest and the interesting thing about our generation that actually defines our generation is the diversity of interests, right? No longer are we solely defined by one sport or activity or interest. We are very curious as a generation to learn and to experience these new things, whether it be fly fishing in Tahoe, learning how to make ceramics, learning how to make music, or, you know, shoot photography, pick up a new sport, whether it be surfing or, you know, paddleboarding or pickleball, I think that is at the crux of what really ties all of these things together, which is cool. And it also goes counter to everything that we were taught from, you know, the past generation of call it pioneers in the industry and pick a product, pick a space, do it better than anyone else. And we didn't want to pigeonhole ourselves, which roots back to us never wanting to be confined to be boxed in. And so it's our kind of take on it for sure. And I think you know, you mentioned our generation. I think what's so unique about us is we grew up with, you know, the internet and we grew up with technology, technological advances and, you know, being able to see at any given time what's going on across the world. You know, that's something that, you know, was, was not, it's not necessarily brand new, but the instantaneousness, the immediacy of being able to tap in with someone or to, to, you know, translate and to have conversations with people that don't even necessarily speak the same language as you and you're seeing that trickle down you see in music now there's the you know blending of of genres and you can that can be kind of a a micro version of what's going on elsewhere in every industry and technology and business and you know you name it and there's a sense of newness to that and you know like you say there there used to be a formula of find a niche, pick a specific product, nail it, you know, do it better than anyone, like like verbatim what you just said. But, um, you know, there's still elements of that. You know, it's not all out the window, but it's just a different landscape these days. And um, I think especially after the pandemic, you know, people had a craving for that connection and to, you know, express and to share their interests. And, um, you know, I think where we're at with Wilbo, obviously we've created, you know, an environment that is super inclusive and, um, you know, has varying interests. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's also important to put your stake in the ground and to have a community that understands what you're about and where you're going and, you know, what, what to expect. But I think, you know, that stake, you know, ironically is that, you know, it's ever changing and that, you know, we'll have a consistent collection of products that are, you know, um, aligned with a certain message, but there's this element of unexpectedness that we are granted and that we're trying to provide for ourselves that, you know, what it means to be a part of Wilbo is that, you know, 
you're just an active member of the community of society of you're just active in general um you're not per se an athlete that steps between the lines but um whether you are or were one you know you can relate with that lifestyle and um you know in the daytime you're active and you're you know whether it's you're running a marathon or you're just playing tennis or whatever it is but then at night you like to step out and look nice and I think it's kind of that crossover of the the entire person as a whole of there's there's more interest than just one completely yeah I mean I completely agree and and you know Bob McKnight actually said hey I, I totally get this philosophy I get this approach if you can work backwards to a degree where you become known for one two three products ideally one right is what he, he wanted <clears throat> that is a very powerful thing. And so for us, I think the approach has been to really develop such a direct line of communication with our community so that we can introduce products and really have that relationship where we can understand what resonates, <clears throat> what maybe doesn't resonate, and how we can continue to develop that product so that it's loved for a long time to come. So I think if you look at the different kind of divisions that we've offered thus far, whether it be our, our primary lifestyle products, a collection of, of sport oriented goods, or now kind of a lounge and home uh, oriented collection, we can take a look at the product that was offered, have learnings from that product by way of our community and feedback and support and or a lack of support if they you know <laughs> tell us which, that which is sometimes the best feedback sometimes the best absolutely if not the best while you know again continue to work to make that better and identify what those core products are for for us so i think that's kind of the approach we've taken which is is very fun it's it's tricky at times but yeah. it's very fun if we have that direct line of communication and that direct relationship with our community for sure and i think kind of what you're alluding to is that you know, the success in business hasn't changed. You know, you need to really focus on a product or series of products that can uplift you. But what I think the intention early on for us was to build that foundation. I think um, the brand as a whole was built through the our direct community. Yeah. And um, creating a space that, is very inviting and very welcoming and, and caters to not only clothing and like products that can uh, better people's lives, but also just a space that can bring people together. Like I said, post pandemic, people just wanted to re-engage. And, and I think, you know, going back on what we were saying, like sometimes it's, it's not about the people that have the exact same interests as you and you kind of, Right. find yourself in an echo chamber, but it's about, you know, meeting people that are different or have different views or different takes or different interests. That's where real growth comes. And I think early on, we just wanted to establish that foundation of, you know, this is a world that we're creating that anything's possible. When it comes to product, obviously we want to really focus and, and nail down those pieces that can become heritage and um, can live on for years and years. And, you know, the only time you need a new piece is when you've worn that thing to shreds and you need a re-up. But yeah, it's, it's almost like a backwards formula of like create this place that people want to come and create this brand that people of all different walks of life can, can relate to, or at least want to be a part of, and then create products that cater to those people. Completely. And one of the things, one of our philosophies that we talked about um, early on and, and continue to talk about um, around product is this kind of idea of building a, not only a heritage brand, but products that last the test of time. Hence why, you know, we're making product here domestically because we can really oversee the process and make sure that it's made with love, you know, sustainably and ethically while also delivering just an exceptional product from a quality standpoint. But what we've talked about is this kind of idea that product initially is seen when a customer experiences it for the first time. You can touch it, you know, you see it, wow, this is a quality product. It's felt as you continue to wear it, 
over the course of your life. But I think it's proven and ultimately proven when you get to pass that product on to someone you love. So seen initially, felt through experience, and proven once it can be passed down or you know given and gifted to someone you love. So that's always been at the kind of forefront of our philosophy when it comes to making product that supports this lifestyle and really resonates with our community and celebrates these diverse passions and pursuits that we all have. And it's really fun. It's, it's hard, but we, you know, have always decided that we'll take the, the harder path at times because it'll be more fulfilling. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I had plenty of hand-me-downs from you. (laughs) So the idea of... Thanks, Quick. Thanks, Olika. uh, (laughs) The idea of little Jimmy's and and Sally's out there wearing... I don't know one Jimmy or Sally. uh, (laughs) Who knows? Maybe in 2050, there's going to be a resurgence of Jimmy and Sally. But the idea of you know, little Jimmy and Sally wearing Wilbo's is a fun, fun thing. And I think, you know, it really comes down to just continuing to refine. I think no different than us as individuals away from Wilbo, how it's just constant maintenance of, I like this, I don't like this. And, um, you know, I want to make this a part of my routine or, you know, whatever it is it's very similar in business is like there's a series of products that we love and that have resonated. How can we continue to build on top of those pieces as, as foundations? And, um, you know, that's, that's a work in progress, like you say, but, um, ultimately, you know, I think the world we want to build and we can kind of talk on where we're at now versus, you know, where we want to go, but the world we want to build is all rooted in celebrating, interests up and down the coast and and throughout the country and you know hopefully global it's globally at some point but um you know i think i'll turn it over to you because you do a great job kind of painting the picture but if you know here we are in in our brick and mortar you know first retail location um kind of describe what the seaside clubhouse is for those that you know, are maybe too far to come experience it for themselves and kind of explain what this has been like for our community and how we want to take this model on the road. Totally. A um, lot to unpack here, but <laughs> I'll start from square one. You know, I got asked the question the other day, so where did the concept for Wilbo come about? And I think that's a funny question, right? Because to us, sometimes we're afraid that people just think of us as a clothing brand, but that's out of our control. But I like that question because it is dynamic on on purpose and intentionally, because from day one, our idea has been to celebrate the different natural and cultural elements in the West through products, through stories and experiences. How we do that can look a number of different ways, but it's always been at the the heart of this kind of vision and this mission of ours is to, as we've touched on, really highlight and celebrate these diverse interests, passions, and pursuits that make up this culture here in the West and throughout our country in a way that's authentic, that's fresh, that's unexpected at times, because we live that life anyway. We're very diverse in what we do. And so to be able to make product, to be able to tell stories, to be able to host events and experiences, whether it be here at our first physical space or alongside other brands and partners in the process, makes it very, very enjoyable. Um, So, you know, this genesis of really celebrating these diverse stories and infusing those inspirations into products and then the stories and the experiences we host has come to a head here first in Laguna, the town in which we were raised. We call this our seaside clubhouse because it is in many ways a, a clubhouse. It's one, one part retail, another part lounge, cafe, clubhouse, where you know we got an outdoor shower in the back and board racks. We got coffee tables and cards and board games. We got, you know, a projector that that showcases different, you know, surf contests or films on the wall. And then we have kind of a horseshoe bar 
that, you know, we can serve coffee or different pastries to our guests because that was the environment that we always wanted our, ourselves yeah. was to be able to go into a place and connect with people. And for us here in North Laguna, it's been such an amazing opportunity to bring our community together, not only around the product that we're offering, right, as, a, as kind of a direct touch point there, but also through this kind of celebration, like we continue to say, around our culture that is so unique in Laguna. I mean, we have the Pacific to, you know, our left, and we have a beautiful kind of range of mountains behind us where there's a lot of activities that can that can unfold what sits in the middle of that is one of the most unique art colonies in the world being laguna beach the diversity of artists here is insane from photographers to filmmakers to you know painters and ceramicists you name it right so i think that like conflux of interests plays so perfectly into what we've always wanted to hit on of the balance between sport art and culture and place that this kind of Laguna seaside clubhouse has been the perfect iteration to start um, and serves as, as we like to call POC one or proof of concept one where ultimately the, the idea is to continue to introduce physical spaces or clubhouses in the different regions in the West to begin with that provide our community with the opportunity to go explore and go experience those different regions and the passions and pursuits, you know, native there. No, I think what you're saying is so powerful and, you know, something that comes to mind for me of just how we approach what we do is we're, what's really important to us is collaboration over competition, which, you know, ironically, we're very competitive people. We love to win, even on the pettiest things. It would be like, who can open the door faster? And we'd get up and run. And I'd obviously beat you, but um, no, it's, I think, especially in today's day and age where there's just a lot of saturation in, in anything because just the accessibility, whether you want to become a musician, whether you want to start a brand, whether you want to learn about real estate, there's so much information these days that allow you to, you know, kind of master a skill and kind of a stance that we've taken is that, you know, obviously you want to be competitive because it's, it drives you and it makes you want to continue to be better, but also having that sense of collaboration. You know, there's, there's a lot of brands, you know, in our backyard that we look at and a lot of people could be like, that's your main competitor. And, you know, to some people, the answer may be yes, but to us, we, we like to, you know, win with people and there's plenty of sand on the beach and um, especially people kind of in our space, it's almost like, especially kind of come growing together or, you know, simultaneously, you want to see them win just as much as they want to see you win. And so that's been a, a big pillar of ours is collaboration over competition. And another thing that comes to mind in that is as you explain kind of you know, we have the seaside clubhouse and, you know, maybe down the road there's a, a mountainside clubhouse or, you know, somewhere in the desert or in the valley somewhere. But kind of the spirit that we've always been inspired by and something that you always bring up that always kind of makes me smile is the idea of Disneyland or any theme park for that matter. But I think Disneyland has really become the pinnacle of what that means. But Kind of the formula that they've built is they create a series of stories, whether it's Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or whoever it is. Um, and, you know, there's something or it's princesses or, you know, people gravitate towards different things or it's Toy Story. Or the best, by the way, Toy, Toy Story. Story. Um, but, you know, what pulls people in is that storytelling component and that, you know, they're pulling on your heartstrings or they're making you laugh or they're making you cry and um um but you know you approach disneyland because you gravitate towards a story and you go and you experience that and you immerse yourself in that and then you know on the way out you pick up a product that represents your love for that and i think that's somewhat of a formula that we've tried to emulate is 
let's create a, an experience and tell a story that people can either be inspired by, connect to, sympathize, empathize, whatever it is, and and then create products that just become a representation of that. And completely, um, you know, you walk in our store, and whether you want to buy something or not, I think you leave feeling, you know, like wow, that was fun to be a part of, or I had great conversation, or you know, some people even come in here and they're just like, I want to live here. So, you know, that's or do not, you live here? Yeah, or, or do you live here? Which would be know, nice. That's that's not to you know pat ourselves on the back, but it's really just to emphasize that. We just want to create this environment that people want to come be a part of and want to, you know, give a piece of themselves to. Because yeah. I think, you know, going back to how we started this, it's it's not about the destination. It's about, you know, the journey and the people that come add their flavor along the way. Mm-hmm. Completely. I think the two things you hit on with this space in particular is it's always been our goal to foster connection and inspiration. Right. And so if someone comes in here, whether it's a friend or soon to be a friend in the process, if you can come into this space and find one of those two things, one day it may be one and the other day it may be another. And at sometimes it may be both. That's a win for us. You know, a win for us is not to try to oversell or to try to, you know, really force anything. It's more so create an environment that connects with people and allows them to connect with others as well as the surrounding environment. And hopefully in that process, they can find inspiration as well. Whether it be, you know what, I've always wanted to surf. Or, you know what, this is such a cool camera. I've always wanted to take up photography. This is cool. So through different you know experiences and events or soon-to-be workshops here, we want to even further that. Because I think it's really important for the overarching kind of position that we've taken and the longer-term vision of what we want to create down the road. For sure. No, I think it's been such a fun journey already. You know, there's been ups and downs, roller coasters, little pun on Disneyland. There you go. Um, But, you know, (laughs) something, again, similar to Disneyland that we love is, you know, we had a friend of ours tell us that they were in an airport or, you know, somewhere in the wild and they saw a Wilbo hat and they knew right away that they could go up and approach that person and, and talk to them or tell story or whatever, because there's kind of this foundation that, you know, anybody that's a part of Wilbo kind of has this spirit of interest and, you know, they, they may not all be like-minded or the same, but there's that sense of curiosity and that sense of, you know, just lust for life. And, you know, if we can continue to cater to that and to create experiences and products that really amplify that spirit, that's, you know, that's kind of what we love. So when? To win. Completely. Well, I mean, the fun thing is that this was just a starting point as we continue to roll out different episodes alongside these interesting people. There will be more and more of these conversations that come up. So, you know, the learnings around us and the brand will continue to take place. I think this this was a great trial one. You know, we had cameras shut off. We had, (laughs) you know, people come up and knock on the door. But uh, being nimble and just continuing to offer something that, you know, is special for us and celebrate and highlight the community is, is what we're so excited about totally. here. And I think, you know, as we were thinking about how do we want to position this or where, where should we start? You know, I think it was a good consideration on our part to start just internally. Yep. It'd be like, you know, here's where we're at. Obviously keep it very transparent. Um, but from here, we just want to highlight the people that inspire us and the people that are a part of Wilbo or we, you know, align ourselves with and turn it over to them. You know, yeah. I think it's almost like we're treating it like let's get us out of the way so we can make it about, you know, them. our, our, exp- the, the community and the, the people that make us go and wake us up and wake up as we wake up every day. <laughs> you need one more coffee. Cause yeah, the latte you made was pretty it. solid, but you know what I'm See, getting at is just know like, you know, Give us life and right, bring us, right. and, you know, you know it's, it's, it's about the people and it's uh-huh. always been about, you know, that external kind of aspect of connection. Totally. And, uh, Hence you know, why the brand was named Wilbo, yeah. which is kind of a combination. 
Yeah. Which, if you want to go into that, that may, that may be a good way to end it. No. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah. People don't actually know the genesis of the name Wilbo, which I think is fun. But, you know, early on, we didn't want to make it about us. Hence why we didn't name it, you know, Will McInerney or Robbie McInerney or McInerney's per se. Yeah. But we wanted something that connected to our family and represented our family because it's personal to us while also being an outward facing kind of message to our community. And so the Wilbo name, right, is your first name, Will. My middle name is Bowen. But growing up, your nickname was Wilbo. Don't know really how that came about. But as we like to say, Wilbo represents the nicknames we form through life and play. Because in these different journeys together, you know, we all form nicknames somewhere along the road. And I think that those nicknames provide us with the opportunity to not take life too seriously, but they also speak to a time and a place when that came about. Wait, where did the, where did that name come from? Come from? where did you get they that tell nickname? Tell a story innately. It's tell like, a story innately. How'd you innately. get that name? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, that's been kind of important for us, but uh, yeah, it ties it all in. I guess it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. And people remember it, which is nice. Yeah, it's, it's got a nice ring to it, which, you know, I think obviously wasn't our intention. I think it was more just, it felt right. And it felt like a good yeah. kind of combination of both family and, and history and, and uh, just that kind of whimsical, you know, storytelling element. Yep. But wherever you are, if you're listening to this in the car, at home, you know, before surf or whatever you're doing, I think Robbie and I both are just excited to continue to, you know, use this outlet as another way to tell stories and to really make it a touch point of where Wilbo's at and where we want to, where we want to go or what's been going on. So I think, you know, like you said, this is just episode one, but I think there's, there's a lot of fun conversation and, and, uh, talking points that we're going to move forward with and stay tuned because we've got some we've already got some pretty fun people lined up oh yeah and we got some unexpected and pretty fun segments as well yeah so we'll make sure that this thing is uh really fun for sure because it and is. if it isn't please tell us and if it isn't <laughs> please tell us and also at the same end of the spectrum um we want to hear from you guys as well who would be fun and interesting to, to get on the show because that's part of the the kind of position that we've taken as well from day one is Hey, you know, if, if you enjoy what we're doing, tell a friend, right. You know, There's that I, sense of ownership of like, yeah, I'm a part of Wilbo, you know, and I take pride in it. No different than Robbie and Will do, or, you know, whoever comes in and, uh, there's kind of that emotional component of like, you know, they want to see us grow because they're growing along with us. It's not, a, it's not a formal program that we have, but I've always told uh, our friends, hey, if you connect with someone, you know, along the road somewhere, whether it be at a bar or a concert or some event, and they resonate with the brand, gift them the hat off your head and we'll replenish it. Right. Because that's the best place that it can come from. When it's done in that way, there's something special about it because there's intention behind it. Yeah. I suppose like, oh, go check out this brand. They make some stuff, yada, yada. It's like, hey, I think you're going to like this. Here you go. Yeah. Funny enough, so I look in my closet these days and I'm looking around to wear some Wilbo, but I've given it away to people that I feel would resonate <laughs> with it. So I come down to the store and I'm like, uh, I'm going to take a new shirt. <laughs> so no, I think you know, I'm just excited for the unexpected, really. Yep. I think there's no real formula that we wish to you know follow it's more just we want to bring unique and interested people together and uh share stories there you go well that's let's all she it. wrote let's do thanks it, brother that was great sure. love it we'll see you guys soon thanks for tuning in